What's up survivors? My name is Cap and welcome back to another 7 days to die tutorial. I'm doing this on alpha 12.3 so if you are watching this down the road and something's changed or it's not working quite right just keep that in mind and if you enjoy the tutorial be sure to throw a like on the video. Now something I've been asked to show you guys a little bit more about and to talk to you guys about is like medicine and food and surviving. Now I've showed you guys about finding weapons, making weapons, uh, your first day survival, making a house and all that other stuff and that's great and wonderful but a lot of times you're going to find yourself in need of medicine and so I thought I would walk you through some of the most basic ones you need the first one you're going to come across that you're going to need is going to be antibiotics this is something that you're going to find quite often these little white and blue pills they're pretty much everywhere they're really easy to find search in medicine cabinets inside houses um, they're they're pretty much everywhere they're really easy to find these can be actually crafted but doing so requires potassium nitrate and moldy bread inside a beaker and a campfire. So it's not something you can get on the first day, but trust me, you can find these pretty much everywhere. Now what antibiotics are going to do for you is when you get hit by a zombie, sometimes you will get infected. The longer you're infected, the further your infection goes, level 1, 2, 3, and 4, until you finally just die from it. And you'll see a little icon of everything over here showing that you're infected. Antibiotics will actually heal the infection. By taking them, you will reduce levels. So if you're level 1, one infection which you can be able to see by hovering over it here in the corner uh, it will reduce it down to not infected if your level 2 goes down to 1 3 to 2 4 to 3 such as such now if you don't have the infection and you take the antibiotics you can still take them and you'll go ahead and makes you immune to further infection as long as the actual buff lasts and you can see over here how long it actually lasts by hovering over it um, takes you about one game day there and it also as long as you don't die during this time it'll boost your wellness points by five points too the next most common form of medicine that you're going to find roaming around are painkillers, the little white pills here. Now these have the same effect using these as it does as using a bandage there. It gives you a little bit of health, except for these make your hydration go down. So taking them will make you thirsty, but it'll make your life go up. And you can find these everywhere, just like with the antibiotics. They're in medicine cabinets, they're in houses, they're in crates. They're You can find them all over the place there. But if you're given the choice between taking painkillers or being able to use a bandage there to improve your health... The bandage is actually going to be better for you because the painkillers will make you more thirsty. Okay, next up, if you're like me, undoubtedly you're going to make a stupid decision and jump off a house, fall off a wall, jump off a cliff, something like that, and break or sprain your leg. Now, without proper help with that, it's never going to heal. But what you can do is you can make a splint in the game. It just takes two sticks, which you can find anywhere, and two cloth fragments, which you can find, rip apart clothes to find, or put some together with some cotton to make those. And it only takes two. Two sticks here, two cloth fragments there, you craft it, and you're good to go. And now you have a splint. I don't think you can find splints that often. Sometimes you can, but I, it, you're more likely to make them than to find them there. But it does take a little while. Once you actually apply this, even if you have a sprained leg or a broken leg there, it's not an instant heal. It will slow down your movement speed, and you will have to kind of run at about half speed for a little while until it heals. And you'll see a little indicator over here that you're using it as well. I don't think you can use it if you're not currently injured but let's see that makes sense let's just eat it that way okay so you can put it on there but you can see without having an actual broken leg it doesn't do anything Okay, the next major thing that you're going to be using a lot are bandages. Now, when zombies hit you, you can get an infection for sure, which the antibiotics, like I said, will help you out with there. But the first thing you're going to need to do is stop the bleeding. There are simple bandages, and then there are regular bandages here, indicated by the red cross symbol on the right side here. Now, the big difference is, and going back to the painkillers here, one of the main things about using these, trying to figure out which one to use, is these painkillers you can stack up to 64 in one spot, versus bandages you can only stack up to 5. So they're easier to carry a lot more of one than the other. But anyway, let's get back to the bandages. Simple bandages will stop the bleeding and you are good to go, but they don't actually improve any health. The regular bandages with the plus symbol on there that will actually heal you. So you can find these everywhere just like you can most medicine or you can make them. If you have a cloth fragment you can just put one in the middle and it'll give you a simple bandage or if you've been able to find some aloe cream you can drop it right up above it here and it'll give you the regular bandage that you can use to actually regain some life with. So these are the two different kind of bandages you're going to come across. Okay to get into a little bit more of the complicated kind of medicines you can find and 
need to survive out in the world there one of the first things and the best things you can find is a blood bag because it gives you health fullness and hydration without any of the negative side effects now some of the times you can find these in um, supply crates you can find them on some of the roaming around nurses they're not super common so that you're not going to run into them absolutely everywhere but they are great to have but if you want to save these after you've done this for a little bit then what you can use them is to create an actual first aid kit which you can see gives you plus 50 health and it's uh, just a wonderful thing to have it also stops bleeding it stops fire it's just a great thing to have but in order to be able to make a first aid kit you have to find a first aid kit schematic first and then once you do just like with most things you whip it out right click it now you can learn the first aid kit and so you'll be able to type it up here and all you're going to need is the blood bag some grain alcohol which you can find in refrigerators and uh, health supply places too and a simple bandage and you get your first aid kit now something else that you can do here is you can use the blood draw kit which you'll find running around nurses and stuff there too and you can use it to collect a little bit of blood as well once you do it you'll hear all kinds of nasty sounding sound effects and stuff going on there um, but it will give you an extra blood bag you basically just took your own blood but if you have a friend out there who's just being overly generous and he wants to take some blood he can give it to you and you can use it granted you can eat it again and it goes right back to the way it was so it's kind of pointless to take your own blood if you're just going to make your own and one of the last major things that you're going to need as far as first aid goes out in the world are vitamins now again you can find these at some of the pop and pill crates or first aid kids or sometimes even nurses run around have these now they don't give you much in the way of wellness but it'll stick with you for a little bit the reason why you need to have these is if you get dysentery now you get dysentery in the game by drinking unclean water so if you just roam into a stream and you start lapping it up there because you're thirsty or you find an uncooked bottle of water and you decide to chug it you have a chance of getting dysentery dysentery basically means you're going to poop yourself into dehydration your hydration level is going to tank your health is going to go down and it lasts for a little while unless you're just really unhealthy you won't die from it specifically but you will lower all of the rest of your stats doing that so having a couple vitamins on hand is really great these are another one of these that you can take even if you don't have dysentery and it is great for your wellness it'll give you a little bit of a buff for them so okay guys um, I hope that was beneficial to you guys out there I know a lot of this is common sense if you've played it but for some new players out there this might be helpful for them uh, if you have any questions do leave them in the comments below um, other than that good luck out there thank you guys for your time and I'll catch you later